signed in 2311, the Treaty of Algeron would become the cornerstone that would keep the Romulan Star Empire and the Federation from ever going to war. But the real question is, does it make sense? Hello and welcome to another episode of Does That Make Sense? A Star Trek themed web series that discusses various odd or inconsistent Trek topics brought up over the years by you, this channel's audience. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Treaty of Algeron. And as always, I'll be playing Devil's Little Advocate about this topic in order to foster amazing discussions in the comments section below. So without further ado, let's dive in and ask the simple question, does that make sense? The Treaty of Algeron, an amazing document, was signed after what became known as the Tomed Incident. What does Canon tell us about the Tomed Incident? Well, virtually nothing, except that it was a major engagement between Starfleet and the Romulan Empire that would cost thousands of lives. But of course, out of this tragic event would come the Treaty of Algeron, ensuring peace between these two interstellar powers until the complete collapse of the Star Empire after Romulus itself was destroyed in 2387. Now, to casual viewers of Star Trek, this treaty would seem to be a marvelous plot device, keeping both sides at the edge of war and the audience wondering if the Romulans would ever cross the line and force the Federation's hand. But to a lot of us more serious viewers, the Treaty of Algeron has such a big hole in it that we could warp the entire Federation fleet through it. And I am of course referring to cloaking technology. Now we have never seen the entire treaty in canon, but there are various parts of it that have been discussed many times. One being that the treaty redefined the borders of the Romulan neutral zone and made clear that any violation of the zone without adequate notification or permission by either side would be considered an act of war. Okay, fair enough, I can buy that part. But the treaty would also stipulate that the Federation and Starfleet were expressly prohibited from development or use of cloaking technology. And this has caused many fans of the show to scratch their head in confusion. Cloaking technology, after all, is a major tactical advantage. Introduced in the original series episode, Balance of Terror, the cloaking device would often become an important plot point of various episodes. So why would the Federation give up such an amazing piece of technology? Well, as I see it, there are really only three options here. The first being that the Federation at the time were basically hippies, willing to sacrifice anything in the name of peace. But I've never subscribed to that idea. I mean, sure, the Federation is a peaceful organization, but they are not a weak one. Generally, they stand for their principles, and do not let any other galactic powers bully them around, no matter the cost. The second option was that the Federation lost at the Battle of Tomid, and to prevent a war, gave up cloaking technology. This is another option I don't really buy. I mean, if the Romulans truly had the advantage, and the situation that occurred was not one that would force the Federation to war, but merely an incident, as it would come to be called, then there would really be no need for a new treaty. And most likely, having the clear advantage, the Romulans would have went to war, rather than signing the treaty themselves. And so, we are left with the final option, that both sides did not have the advantage, and were desperate to prevent a war. But the problem with this scenario is, that it makes the treaty appear very lopsided, as we never hear what the Romulans gave up in exchange for the Federation giving up cloaking technology. Well, as any fans of this channel know, I have an overactive imagination, and to me, this final option is really the only option, with my brain working out the details based a little on canon. You see, in that original series episode, Balance of Terror, everyone seemed far more worried about the Romulan's plasma torpedoes than the cloaking device itself. Remember Spock's little demonstration? 
In my headcanon, the Tomad incident was so devastating because the Romulans had developed a super weapon version of that plasma torpedo. One so devastating that both sides were shocked by it. The Star Empire really was not in a position for war, but pretending to be, would then agree to sit down and hammer out a treaty. In it, the Federation would agree to not develop cloaking technology, while the Star Empire would agree to abandon plasma torpedo technology. And subsequently, we would never see that type of technology used again. There would be plasma-based weaponry in Trek, but never would the Romulans use plasma torpedoes again. And we've seen before in Star Trek that the Federation and other galactic powers love to sign treaties banning the use of certain weapons. See the Subspace Weapons Accord. To me, both sides giving up something major is the only real thing that makes sense. Gene Roddenberry himself was often asked by fandom why the Federation never developed a cloaking device. And maybe the treaty came out of the frustrated desire to never have to answer that question again. But when he did answer it, he would just say something along the lines of, the Federation doesn't sneak around. Like communism, that sounds great on paper, but in reality, it really doesn't work out well. But what do you think? Do you think the Treaty of Algeron makes sense? Which option do you believe occurred to bring this treaty to life? Or do you have another option that you'd like to put forward for the galaxy to see? Well, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. I'm looking forward to reading what you have to say. Live long and prosper, dear Trinaries. Jolantru.